Today we are going to talk about canes and how to make canes. I have a few canes on my YouTube channel and I will link for the playlist in the info box below so you can find them. But let's get to it and see what you need to know. I normally like to make my canes round if it is possible. And here you need to know if you make a tiny circle with your pattern inside, you will get a cane that is long, but not that long. If you make your start circle big with your pattern inside, you will get even more cane out of it and you will have it for a very, very long time. The smaller circle is more than enough for your project, so keep that in mind while making it. We're also going to talk about how tall you're making your cane. Then the higher you make them, the more cane you get. And the smaller you make them, the less cane you get. I recommend at least half a centimeter tall or one centimeter if you are new at working with canes. I like to make my canes round because this is going to make it easier for us to roll them to get them smaller. Make them big enough for your design so it can be in there and it's not too bad to make. And I am going to make a pine cone tree just because we can. You can still make square canes or triangular canes or the butterfly canes and stuff like that. Make your pattern inside the cane and build it up just like we do with a round circle cane. But this one you cannot roll. You need to uh, stretch and pull it instead of rolling it just like I did with these flat canes. I will leave a link for that in the info box below and after the video. But now we are going to make this round cane with the pine cone tree inside. For that I'm going to use some pine cone tree green colored clay. I will cut a piece off that I think is big enough for my pine cone tree. I'm going to condition this by kneading it really good so it gets a little softer. Do not knead it so much that it is going to be sticky because that is almost impossible to work with. Here I'm also going to tell you that if you want to, you can use different kinds of clay like Fimo, Zenit, uh, Primo and so on. And you can actually mix them together. Just be careful because some of them are softer than other. So if you take uh, this Zenit that I'm working with and Fimo Soft, the soft one will be squashed in your canes and not keep the shape. We also like to avoid air bubbles. You can see that there is a lot of tiny holes in this clay. And if you bake a piece of clay like this, it will actually crumble while you cut it after baking. So condition your clay until it's not uh, cracking like you see here while working with it. It needs to be uh, work able, but not too soft and sticky. My clay is ready and I took a piece of scrap clay that is brown and I'm going to use that for the trunk of my tree. I make three triangles and I'm cutting off the top of the two of them and I'm just going to connect them like you see me do here. So the tree itself is really easy to make. When building up a cane you always start from the inside and work yourself out. Then I'm going to make the trunk of the tree what is really easy. It's just a square in the same height as the tree itself. I got the size of my tree almost as big as my drawing or let's say a small. If you have problems with the size of your creation, then you can build your creation directly onto the paper and it's all fine. Now I'm going to build up the white around my tree and first of all I make sure that my clay have the same height as the tree I made first. Then I'm going to put in these small parts of the tree so that is fixed or filled up. I like to make it into something that looks a bit more like a square 
and from there I'm going to round it off. So first I square it off and then I round it off. I'm going to make this roundish shape on the side of this little uh, tree and I'm doing it on both sides of the tree. As I don't want to be able to see the tree trunk on the outside of my cane, I am making this tiny uh, end piece on my cane and I am then going to squeeze it really good together so I make sure there is no air bubble between the different colors and that everything is really good and tight put together. I then rolled out a strip of white clay on a setting 4 on my pasta machine and I'm going to wrap that around the edge around uh, my circle cane here and I'm making sure that I don't overlay anything because that will make it wonky. And just as we wrapped it in a strip of white clay I wrapped it in a green clay after that. You can wrap it in red or yellow or what color you like and maybe even make it striped. Then I am going to squeeze it together so I make sure that everything is firm and ready to be rolled. If your cane is getting too sticky to work with then put it into your refridge for half an hour and it will harden a little more and if it's not enough with half an hour then give it one more. I am starting slowly with reducing my cane and I'm doing it slowly this way I have full control of the pattern. Don't worry about the ends, the pattern here will look wonky and that really doesn't matter, it's the inside that counts. I've seen some people that is going to push it a more in the middle so it looks more like a trumpet in the ends while rolling their canes. I'm not doing that, I like my cane to be almost the same size all the way because um, I think I get more out of the ends like that. When I'm rolling my cane I'm trying to use one hand only and if I'm using two hands for rolling I am very careful so that I don't get the inside of my cane kind of twisted around in there. When the canes get too long to keep uh, rolling, I am just going to cut them in half. Here you see the little Christmas tree and it is looking perfect. After I cut them in half, I can roll them even longer without any problems. And here you can see that the small Christmas tree that we made actually gave quite a lot of cane. I already did cut off one of these ends and now I'm just going to cut off the other one. Do not throw this out because you can use that for other things like the handles that I made for my blade or for the inside of a cake and so on. Now we are going to talk about baking. I always bake my canes for only 5 minutes because if you bake it for more they can be really hard to cut. When I bake my canes I am using this piece that, um, that I really don't know the name of so I will google it and find it and write it right there. If you bake something that have a roundish shape on something metallic or glass or something the heat will um, give it a flat spot but if you bake it on this you won't get that flat spot so I prefer to bake my things on this piece. If you bake your cane too long by accident you will always be able to bake it a little more and this way it will get soft and you can cut it while it is hot. When cutting your baked uh, canes please use a sharp blade because that will make it easier. You can also cut your canes before you bake them so that you can give the slices a tiny bit of texture before you bake them because after baking the cut will be all flat without any kind of texture. 
it's a good idea to make sure that your canes is not too soft while cutting them if you want to make your textures because if you cut them when they're too soft you will just uh, squeeze the cane together and out of shape. I like to cut my canes up in five centimeters pieces and then I am going to slice some of this. This way I have some already cut candy that is ready for me to use or in my gingerbread houses or decorations on plates and so on, whatever I need to use it for. I hope this answered all of your questions about caning and that you will go and try it out because it's actually really fun and kind of addictive. But if you have more questions, then please leave it in the comments below and I will see what I can do to help you out. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe and happy crafting.